Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to my talk. I'm Zhigong Li, graduate student from Fudan University. My topic today is a large-scale empirical analysis of Chinese web passwords. When you surf the internet, you have to register some passwords. You have to register some accounts with passwords. You must have your unique appetite for passwords. Apparently, users from different regions prefer different types of passwords. Some literature imply that Chinese passwords may, may be hard to guess. So here, we address two problems. Does Chinese choose better passwords? And how can we guess them? Why do we study Chinese passwords? Because Chinese netizens are the biggest internet user group. According to the 34th statistic uh, report of China internet development from CNNIC this year, there are over 600 million netizens in China. In addition, the security of Chinese web services is worrisome. The five Chinese websites, CSDN, Tianya, Dudunyu, 7K7K, and 178.com have leaked their plain text passwords which are publicly available in the past few years. With the leaked passwords from Roku and Yahoo, we leveraged over 100 million plain text passwords to analyze the features of Chinese passwords. My, topic, my talk has, mainly has three parts. The first is the characteristics of Chinese passwords, which include the most popular passwords, structures, and the strength of them. The second part is the patterns used in Chinese passwords. And at last, we will try to guess in Chinese passwords using our analysis. Let's see the most popular passwords first. We can see that password 126 and 129 are the most popular passwords, both in Chinese and the English data sets. Another remarkable point is that all the popular Chinese passwords in Chinese data sets are digits only. Actually, more than half of the passwords are digits only in Chinese data sets. In this figure, we list every printable characters in the descending order according to their percent in Chinese passwords. The first 10 characters are all digits, and the percents of all digits in Chinese data sets are more than those in English ones. Then, English type passwords contain more letters and symbols. Why do Chinese people prefer digits? There are only, Chinese characters have only 400 kinds of pronunciation elements, ignoring the tones. So, some, the, pronunci the pronunciation of some digits are similar to those of Chinese characters. Thus, the pronunciation of a sequence of digits may sound like a sentence. For example, the pronunciation of 520 sounds like I love you in Chinese. Since there are so many digits in Chinese datasets, are, there, are they easier to guess? Let's measure the strength to see the result. Recently, the resistance to guessing is mostly used to measure the password strength. Alpha work factor is one of the measurements. Alpha work factor means the expected number of guesses needed to succeed with the probability alpha. There is one assumption that the attacker knows the distribution of the data set. For example, the data set has four passwords. Each password occupies a certain proportion. And if alpha is 0 0.4, which means the attacker wants to guess 40% of the counts, you only need to guess once. So alpha work factor is 1. And if alpha is 0 0.9, the attacker needs to guess the first three passwords. So alpha work factor is 3. In real cases, alpha work factor may be a very big, big large number. So we can change it into the unit of bits, which is a logarithmically scaled workload. 
This figure shows the curves of alpha work factors and the different alpha values for the seven websites. The two dotted lines belong to Roku and Yahoo. We can see at the beginning the alpha work factors of them of Roku and Yahoo are bigger than those in Chinese datasets. But after 0 0.25, they are similar. Dudu New and 178.com is an exception. 178.com is a little game website, and Dudu New is a commercial website. So they, they may perform difference with others. Only knowing the stru structures can help us guess them. We analyzed some patterns. You may already know that English words often appear in the past words, maybe with some mangling rules. The reasons may be that English words can be typed directly in the keyboard. However, Chinese characters can't. What can be typed directly in the keyboard is the pinyins of Chinese characters. Pinyin is the way to represent the pronunciation of Chinese characters. Although there are many dialects in China, the pinyin is the only way to, to, show, their, to show their phonetic symbols. In the letter-only passwords, about 30% to 60% Chinese passwords are the combination of pinyins. And in the mixed, mixed passwords, which means the passwords contain letters and other types of characters. There are about 20% passwords contain pinyin. One interesting fact is that there are, some, there are always one theme in the passwords. That's love. The, the first in the top Chinese pinyin means I love you in English. And Chinese surnames are also popular. The second, third, and fifth top Chinese pinyins are Chinese surnames. Uh, my surname is the second one. <laughs> Dates are also popular in Chinese passwords, since they can be typed as digits. We extracted the consecutive sequence of exact six digits and eight digits in order to analyze two typical types of dates. The first one is eight digit dates with Y for year, M for month, and D for day. In this, in this table, we can see that most Chinese users put the year at the beginning, and in Roku and Yahoo, users usually put the year at the end. For the six digit dates, the situation is similar. This coincides with the user's habits of different regions. Another observation is that dates are often put at the end of passwords. About 70% dates are put at the end, no matter in which, which data sets. Now, we can guess the Chinese passwords according to our analysis. The, guess method, the guessing method is based on probabilistic context-free grammar. This grammar describes the structures of passwords using a set of rules, and it's a dictionary guessing indeed. There is an example. Since the rules are generated from the training set, uh, for example, the passwords in the training set has two structures. 70% of the passwords have five letters, three digits, represented by L5D3. And 30% of the passwords have two symbols, three letters, three digits, represented by S2, L3D3. The three digits may be one, two, three, with the probability 60%, or three to one, with the probability 40%. The two the two symbols may be two number signs or two stars with equal probability. And we will fill the letter using the dictionary since it's a dictionary guess. So every, every password we generated has a, has a probability. So we can guess the passwords according to their probability. Training set or dictionaries are the two things we need. We, we select the four training set from, 
from from one chi Chinese data set, Dudunyu, and one English data set, RawQ. RawQ passwords in RawQ TS and Dudu TS are two million passwords randomly selected from RawQ and Dudu News, respectively. MRawQ TS is selected from RawQ, but we made it half percent digit only passwords, 10 percent letter only passwords. These proportions are close to the Chinese ones. The RawQ Dudu TS are selected from RawQ and Dudu New at the same time. There are two dictionaries, the English dictionary and the Chinese dictionary. The English dictionary, edict for short, is the combination of dict 0294 and the English lower, which are two popular dictionaries. And if we add 20,000 most popular pins into the English dictionary, we get the Chinese dictionary. The dictionary is used to represent the influence of pinyin. We also add the 20 most popular six digit and eight digit dates into the rules to represent the influence of dates. After 10 billion guesses, this figure shows the result. We divided the figure into four parts, each one training set one part. The first, the first column in each part means the guessing using English dictionary. If we using Chinese dictionary, we get the second column with a good improvement. If we add the dates, we get the third column. We didn't add the dates for the last two training sets because they already contain many Chinese dates. Finally, if we use Chinese dictionary and add the rules of dates, we will get a considerable improvement. For the M -Q TS, we increase the guessing efficiency by about 34%. So, Chinese passwords have over 50% digit only passwords, and they contain many pins, and we can use pin and dates to improve the guessing efficiency for them. That's all for my talk, thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, we have plenty of time for questions, so I'd like to invite you to come to the microphone over there or come um, over up to me here. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Goldberg from Agile Bits. For your probabilistic context-free grammar, did you uh, base that on the tools developed by Matthew Weir, or did you develop these on your own or separately? Uh, I use the... I use the method described in his paper. Okay, thank yeah, you very much. Just like this. Um, there's plenty of time for further discussion while you all are thinking. Let me ask you a question. Um, could you compare for us the probabilistic context-free grammar method that you use compared to what is used by state-of-the-art password cracking tools that are used by bad guys today? Is the probabilistic context-free grammar method similar to or of comparable effectiveness, or how does it compare? Uh, the, normally, the, the cracking tools are just uh, uh, dictionary guess. They may just guess the words in the dictionary with Mangolin rules, and uh, the probabilistic context grammar can analyze the, analyze the structures of passwords and fill in some and Using this, this method, we can add some rules, uh, like the rules of dates, and using the normal, uh, normal, normal cracking tools, uh, it's hard for me to uh, add some rules to it. So we choose the, this method. Kevin Bowers, RSA Labs. In your data analysis, you're looking at where dates were commonly used. Can you talk a little bit about how you distinguished dates from general random numbers or other, other number formats of, of that length? Uh, uh, actually, uh, maybe there are some uh, false positives in the, in when we distinguish if, the, if it is dates. Uh, for the eight-digit dates, uh, 
it is really it is simpler, and for the six-digit dates, uh, it may be a little tricky. So we delete some uh, some uh, we delete some six-digit dates because they 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 may be not a date. For for example, one two three one two three, uh, it can be seen as a date, but mostly it it, it can't. So we we delete some some of the some of the uh, some of the days. Uh. Follow up question. Then um, you said it in your your dictionary um, construction, you added the twenty thousand most popular dates. Where did those dates come from? Where did you? How did you generate those popular dates? Uh, the popular dictionary, uh, the popular pins, and the popular dates are are all, are all extracted from the uh, the Chinese data sets. And uh, we give we give them a probability according to their proportion in the data sets. If there's nobody else, um, just following up actually on your question, just to fill in there are sort of three different approaches for generating passwords for password crackers. There are these things that are effectively regular expressions that are used in most password cracking tools. Then there are people who use Markov models. And then there are people who use um, uh, what you're using, the prob probabilistic um, context-free grammars. Uh, and one thing about the context-free prob one thing about the probabilistic CFGs is that they tend to perform better when you get to passphrases and longer sorts of passwords um, than, the, uh, than the things that are kind of like the regular languages used directly by um, Hashcat. So, sorry, not a question, but I wanted to try to answer what you had asked. Okay, thank you. While you're ruminating, I'll ask one more clarification question. So you saw a significant improvement in the effectiveness of cracking passwords from Chinese-oriented sites using your methods. Um, if you looked at passwords on sites that were not specifically targeted towards the Chinese um, audience, like RockU or, um, or other sites, um, did you see or would you expect to see similar increase and effectiveness. Mm. Maybe not that significantly uh, improvement, but uh, since Chinese people, uh, <laughs> as far as I know, there are, um, uh, f for example, the LinkedIn, uh, there is about 100, 1 million, over 1 million Chinese people using LinkedIn, and I think our methods will help. Maybe, ca maybe can guess their passwords. Uh, this may be a. There must be an improvement, but not that sig significantly. Indeed, thank you. Um, let me ask the second speaker to come up, and while the second speaker is getting set up, um, I'll ask you one last question. Um, have you seen any differences in password lengths between Chinese versus English passwords? Passwords links. Length, the length, the how many, how many characters are in the password? Have you looked at that? W w what is password links? Ah, I'm sorry. The number of characters in the password. So the password one two three four five six has length six. Length. Length. Uh, Length may be a not very, length is uh, one matrix for the password strength, but it's not the only one. And uh, uh, the previous, the previous uh, metrics for password length depend, uh, password uh, strength depend on the length. And uh, recently they are not, uh, they, are, they are not very, uh, actually the, they are not very useful. Mm. Thank you, let's th thank the speaker again.